This is part six of a very important read of an article that Dame Wigington of geoengineeringwatch.org has posted on his website, former Air Force officer warns of atmospheric spraying and the coming collapse. If you have not heard part one, two, three, four, and five, you can go to my channel and then come back here and then listen to part six. Part six, I will be picking up on what this Air Force Colonel is telling you to do, which is to purchase CB radios. But it's very important information that is in part five. You don't have to listen to the video, just click on the link below and read it yourself. So, I will be picking up Uh, unfortunately, in the middle of what he is talking about with these CB radios. And I apologize for this. I only have 15 minutes on YouTube to post, and my programs are not working properly, so whenever they end, they end. So these CB radios that he's talking about are available on Amazon and eBay, and he strongly recommends purchasing at least one spare heavy-duty battery and an optional longer Nagoya NA771 antenna, which greater lengths equals greater range, so that antenna gives you greater range. If you become active with radio communications, please educate yourself on ComSec or communication security. Learn commonly used code words used in all radio communications. Keep transmissions as brief as possible. Never reveal any information pertaining to yourself or your location and try to verify with whom you are talking. For example, using predetermined passwords. As a matter of course, we use two-person teams, one as the radio operator, the other as a spotter or a lookout. Both are armed. This is being written by an Air Force colonel. He is telling American citizens to start thinking outside the box, become soldiers, think like military, to prepare for the coming collapse. The mainstay and bedrock of reliable long distance radio communication is amateur radio. Amateur radio operators and experimenters have contributed significantly, significantly to the body of knowledge surrounding electronic human audio and video communications for decades and have earned many of their operating privileges from the FCC because of their efforts, particularly during major wars. Both amateur radio operators and the military use similar frequencies, which is both an advantage an advantage for intel or gathering intelligence information, and a disadvantage, the uh, communication security they're monitoring. Amateur radio sign signals are capable of traveling all over the world, either by traditional ionospheric propagation or via amateur radio satellites. Because of their power capability up to 1,500 watts, and the wide range of frequencies on which these can operate, only amateur radio stations participate in the emergency communications networks themselves. Just as there are ways to interfere with signal propagation, jamming, there are effective techniques for circumventing, uh, circumventing jamming. Amateur radio operators communicate using conventional voice transmissions of various types. Morse code, AM, FM, USB, LSB, or via computerized digital communications. These amateur stations are referred to as a net control station. Depending upon the current alert level, they are prepared to operate 24-7. Part of my initial goal was to make emergency communication available to as many Americans as possible. Fortunately, many amateur radios are able to transmit and receive all of the frequencies utilized by the various unlicensed services mentioned above, CB, FRS, GMRS, MURS. In an emergency, establishing contact 
with an amateur net control operator would be your first task, keeping in mind safety considerations such as location, brevity of transmissions, not giving out any personal information. I cannot urge you strongly enough to educate yourselves now with current and accurate information regarding what the military industrial corporate complex is doing in and to our country, your state, your county, your community, for they have penetrated all levels. You are already intimate of the incredibly deleterious effects that overspraying our country with tons of toxic and potentially toxic elemental, elemental chemical and biological agents has done and is doing. And unfortunately, Snagit has stopped, so I'm going to stop here, and I will pick up with this paragraph in part seven of this incredibly important information that a Air Force colonel is imparting to all of you. <laughs>